need quiet time in God, read the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. This is the reason why. Because it's all about Jesus. Our goal is to sustain our focus on Him. Because we become like the one we behold. Okay? That's what we become, the one we behold. I don't know about you, but there's some ugly looking dogs around now the streets. Have you noticed that? <laughs> and some of the others look the same as the dogs, don't they? Because they behold the dogs. It's incredible. I'll go down to South, South Road and the vicious dogs on South Road. It's incredible now. They scare me. It's incredible. But we become what the one we behold. Jesus is the exact representation of the Father. He died so that the same Spirit who was in Him and upon Him, giving Him constant access to what the Father was saying and doing, could be said to live in who? In you and me, in us. The same Spirit. Over these past months, I have shared on numerous occasions that I believe this is a time of preparation. God is looking for men and women who were prepared to pour out their heart, their whole being, in worship and prayer to God. Are you up for that? Yes. And we too can have that same relationship with the Father, God, that Jesus has. That we are sons and daughters of the living God. 1 Peter 2, verse 4 to 12. Thanks, Paul. That's important, a great job so far today. <laughs> As you come to him, Jesus, the living stone, rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious to him. You also, like living stones, where are you? A living stone. Are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For he scripture says, see I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone. And the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. What did he say? Whoever trusts in him will, what? will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe this stone is precious, but to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. And a stone that causes men to stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were distinct for. Verse 4 says, you also, as living stones, are being built up into a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. The people of God throughout the scripture are often referred to the house of God. The reality of this is that the blood of Jesus made a way for the Spirit of God himself to dwell inside each one of us. When I think of that, the reality is that the blood of Jesus made the way for the Spirit of God Himself to dwell inside each one of us. I don't know about you, but when I think of that, it blows my mind. It just absolutely blows my mind. The moment that we chose to follow Christ and God moved into our house, we sign up for an ongoing of transformation in our lives. That's what we sign up for. An ongoing transformation in our lives. Do you know what it has to do with some of us? Our houses need to be gutted and remodelled. Six years ago we bought an old house in Waterloo. I'm going to tell you, six years down the line, never buy an old house. It needs to be remodelled too much. I can see when they do regeneration that they knock the old hours and they lose his dad. It was sort of a character. But I tell, I tell you what, if you've got the choice whether to buy an old house or a new house, buy a new house. Okay, honestly. Because they need gutting, remodeling, and it just takes time. It's so, so for me pers personally, per no, per um, for me personally, it, it's, um, it's better to buy a new house, honestly. But the amazing thing about it is, is that the same applies to our lives. You know that? The same applies to our lives. The older we are when we come to know Jesus, the more remodeling needs to be done. Amen. Right? You know something? I shared on Wednesday night about kids. Kids 
when they come to know Christ, they don't need very remodeling at all. They know they, they need very little remodeling. You know that when kids come to know Christ. I'm still got more more years in my life outside Christ than I have knowing Christ, and God's still remodeling me. But when a kid comes to know Christ, there is no remodeling at all. It's fantastic, isn't it? I prophesied on Wednesday night about the kids. Now, I don't know about you, I've never seen kids. We have between six, 60 and 70 kids coming in now during the week from noughts to teens. And I've never seen kids. So I'll be, I think if, every, if every kid come on a Sunday, that's like 35 kids who regularly come on a, sun, a Sunday morning. We, we never get that many, but if, if one of them came at one time. I've never seen kids in my entire life who love Jesus as, as these kids do. They just love it. They just love coming to church. Mm -hmm. And as I prayed on Wednesday, on Wednesday night at the prayer meeting, I just seen a picture of kids in their schools wanting to have prayer meetings and do things in schools. And Link, up, Link just share what you shared with us on Wednesday, on Wednesday night. Listen to this. These are two nine-year-old girls. Listen to this. Uh, um, Not far off it. Chloe and Phoebe were pushing down the school with work, getting people to sign up for their prayer clubs. But, uh, they decided to run. And the teacher said, I've never met children like these who love God, who it's genuine because kids can do things for sure. But she said, it's obvious it's genuine and I've never met children like them. It's fantastic. And I'm coming to the club. <laughs> so, and, and all, all the other kids are wanting to, to He's not fantastic. Kids sitting in prayer schools in their schools. Go on, they pray for us against grace. It's fantastic. My kids are just going to want to stay up to watch Tom Benfrey that they come to every night. And we're sharing the body for It was like there was a little mini revival in our house on Friday. We and Mark were saying, Come on, let's pay for each other then. And that's when it was, we were copying off a bit And then Jesus, I mean, they were just asking for, for God to fill them with the Holy Spirit. They said, What would we pay for you? And they were dancing and jumping down the living room. But it wasn't fun out. It wasn't just messing around. It was like, you know, you knew God's working. And the kids are all just so over. This is the start of revival, yeah. you know that. When kids were, you know, yeah. okay. you know, fantastic. I mean, God gave me a, a, a vision of, of, that, of the kids who are going to come here. It's absolutely awesome. Absolutely awesome. This process of transformation in our lives works to change us into a house that can truly express the glory and nature of God in the world we live. Those kids are expressing the nature of God in the world they live. Eight and nine years of age, God is real to them, and they want to tell their friends that he's the best thing on this planet. Isn't that fantastic? Isn't that fantastic? can't get over this. Kids wanting to tell their mates and the teachers about Jesus. Whoa! Fantastic, isn't this? Paul explains that this ongoing transformation is taking place primarily in the dimensions of our what? Of our mind. Let's have a look at Romans 12 verses 1 and 2. So we have to be, be remodeled in the way we think. Okay? Kids, it just becomes automatic for them. Therefore, I urge you brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world will be transformed by the renewing of your what? Your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, is good, pleasing, and perfect will. 